Welcome! This is your VCO guide to the defense. Victory in battle isn't awarded on the merits of what you can take, but what you can keep. The enemy is constantly attempting assaults on NC territory and it'll be up to you and your squad to stop them from taking away our glorious freedom. Defending key areas is often easier than assaulting them. If you catch the enemy's advance quick enough, you can usually set up a defense without interruption. Remember that each base has a local spawn logistic which cannot be destroyed without losing the SCU first. Also remember, it usually takes less time for a control point to reset back to normal than it does to capture. However, there are some key drawbacks to defense as well. Local spawn points are predictable, as well as easily camped, and the enemy's entry points are often a surprise as gal drops could come from anywhere. When preparing to intercept the enemy, it's important to keep some key strategies in mind to ensure you're ready for whatever the battle may throw at you. First, be aware of where you're fighting. It is much easier to defend buildings rather than areas in the open, as the open air leaves you vulnerable to enemy fire from mechanized forces. If you're defending an open air control point, be sure to position yourself near cover, where you can quickly touch the point to prevent it from flipping, and then run back to safety. Also, keep in mind, the longer you can move, the longer you will live. When guarding an area, be aware of the exits that are available, and what you may use as cover. Knowing where to go if the enemy breaches your position can very well save your life and open future opportunities for counterattack. Once you've decided where you want to set up, take further note of your surroundings, look for potential entry points, and any place a bullet can pierce the skull of an ally. These locations become choke points in the battle, so be sure to make them choke points for your enemies, and not for you. Try to stay away from doorways, and when you camp windows, do so in a way that lets you quickly duck for cover before you take too many hits. If you are an engineer for your squad, remember that your turret isn't just a big gun. It also makes a damn good shield, so set it up in a location that makes your enemies map to move around it, blocking a doorway if you can. It will force your enemies to bottleneck, and turns them into considerably easier targets. If that's not very practical to do so, set your turret up where you have a clear line of sight of at least one entry point. Set your ammo pack in a location that allies can attain the ammo they need without compromising their positions. If you're playing a medic, it is important that you position yourself in an area you can safeguard yourself while waiting to heal or resurrect allies. If you're playing an infiltrator for your squad, be sure to place either your recon darts or a motion tracker in an area that will provide the most helpful intel it can, such as an area that tracks movements behind walls, or underground, or on the point itself. If the location you're defending gives you the option, always choose to situate yourself on the high ground. The high ground will give you a better line of sight when engaging the enemy, but more importantly, it will avoid friendly fire. Friendly fire, as any Planetside 2 player knows, is an incredibly annoying thing! It can also be difficult to avoid, as players can phase in and out of you as they move around, and many character skins look very similar regardless of what faction you play. Sticking to the high ground helps establish a clear difference between who is defending and who is attacking. If you have allies on the high ground, chances are you'll want to be there too. Once your squad has picked where they're situating themselves, now is the time to brace for impact. Engineers will quickly set up their turrets, medics will stick to an area that they can easily protect themselves while they heal their teammates. But, uh, what about the heavies? Heavies, remember friendly fire can be just as dangerous as the enemies breaking into the base, so keep your movements brisk, purposeful, and stay out of the line of fire of allies. Again, stay out of doorways! If you find yourself on the front lines, remember to crouch to maximize the number of guns pointed at the right targets. It would allow those behind you the chance to get in some shots as well. More guns it means more shooting, more shooting means more dead enemies, and more dead enemies means more freedom! This is largely due to your squad's force multiplier, which is a phenomenon in many first-person shooters in which two or more players focusing on the same target will be more efficient and effective than each player engaging separate targets on their own. This is often the case as multiple guns focusing down the same target will drastically increase potential accuracy as well as cut down on the time to kill, or TTK for short. The more quickly your squad can drop an enemy soldier, the more quickly you can engage another enemy soldier. In the heat of battle, when deciding who to engage among all those juicy, juicy targets, try to pick someone an ally is already shooting at. It will greatly increase the chance for success and allow both of you to move on with further orders. Remember, it, it doesn't matter who gets the kill so long as you all get the victory. And the freedom. Now, let's talk about fire teams. When defending a facility, many squad leaders will employ the strategy of fire teams to cover specific areas of the base. 
Fire team is basically a portion of a squad designated to a specific task, while other members are assigned to a different task. They are most often divided by high and low, meaning squad members 1 through 6 are considered team high, while 7 through 12 are team low. This is in reference to how the names of squad members are listed on the left side of your heads-up display. Make note of your own numbered position in the squad, so you can take action quickly when the need for a fire team arises. Fire teams are usually assigned when a single squad is expected to cover a larger area, giving them much needed alarm if the enemy appears from a single point of entry. In this example, Fire Team High is watching the point room and double doors, whereas Fire Team Low is watching staircases. Fire teams can also be used to ensure proper coverage is applied to a specific location. Here, we see that a small fire team is positioned at the top of the staircase, and the remaining members of the squad are positioned in the bottom room. This allows for a greater number of crosshairs to cover the entrance point than there would be if everyone's placed at the top of the staircase or on the bottom, and it also maximizes your squad's force multiplier. Listen closely to your squad leader's directions and follow them to the best of your ability so you can ensure your squad is as effective as it can be. Once the enemy's spawn logistics have been located, one or more squads will be given orders to take it out. Once they are successful, the enemy push will likely end and the battle is won. So, there you go. Now you're ready to intercept an enemy invasion. See you on the other side, soldier.